All right, I just want to do a quick video to show uh, folks out there how I sharpen my bandsaw blades. Now this is a uh, bandsaw setter that I built. Um, the first thing you need to do, you definitely need to set your blade first. Um, and I'm not going to go real in detail on this one since I covered this in another video, but simple as closing it, setting a tooth, moving to the next one, you know, set the tooth, move to the next tooth, set the tooth, watch the indicator. So you can watch a video on that and see how I do that with this one. But if you're going to sharpen your own blades, buy yourself a good setter or make yourself a good setter. Um, and, but you do that first and then we're going to go over and I'm going to show you what I do to do my sharpening. Okay, this is my sharpening setup. Uh, as you can see, it's on a old-fashioned DeWalt radio arm saw. Uh, actually, this was somebody's going to actually throw this away, but it's on beautiful roller bearings. It's a fantastic old saw, and it worked absolutely perfect for this. Someone else on YouTube posted a bandsaw band sharpening setup with a radio arm saw, so I can't take credit for this idea, but this is my setup, and you know you guys can benefit from that too. But it works really, really well. Um, I think I am at some point going to build an automated sharpener, but for right now, I'm loving this setup. I have the, I have the uh, thing tilted at 10 degrees, the head tilted at 10 degrees. That's a gray stone, like off a bench grinding wheel, that's rated for the right RPM of this, of this uh, motor. So there's no chance of it doing anything goofy. Um, it's just a wooden table. I have a nice, just a simple aluminum setup, some aluminum angle that's uh, slotted here and here so that this front angle is free to adjust on the blade. The back one is fixed. Uh, you'll notice some, uh, see if I can get around the back, you'll notice some dowel pins sticking out the back. That's what the blade ride, the back of the blade rides on. Um, the rest of this is just some pins that are glued in or in a hole glued in some hardwood blocks same on the other side just to guide the blade around in the back it's just a simple setup with some pieces clamped on to help the hold up the back of the blade um, you'll have to dress your wheel um, I have a gauge here that I use it's a, a portion of the tooth and you know you have to grind your wheel hopefully that's a pretty decent view you have to grind your wheel to that profile or actually dress your wheel to that profile and then you'll have to redress it occasionally too as it loads up um, I use this big discarded diamond plated mandrel as a dressing tool but any suitable dressing tool will work um, it's quite messy at first to get the form on the wheel once you have the initial form it's just a matter of touching it up and it's not anywhere near as bad so I'll put the camera on a tripod and I'll show you how I put the blade in, I set up the indexing finger and I will actually touch up this blade a little bit. Although this blade is no good, it's got some stress cracks, so I'm not, uh, it's not a blade I intend to run, but it'll still be the same procedure. So I'll get it set up, set the camera on a tripod here so I can use two hands. All right, here we go. Take the blade, got the camera on a tripod here so I can use two hands. Blade just sets down like that. And put it in between that slot. Um, I have this slot actually lined with a piece of Teflon in here. So this thing will move fairly smoothly through here. But it's tight, you know, so that it doesn't, uh, when we go to grind through, it doesn't jerk the blade around. But. So anyhow, all right, this is my indexing finger. It just simply slides onto that threaded bolt. I put a nut on it, keep it in place. And then I take and I just have this little, little bungee cord or rubber band or anything would probably do just fine. I hook it onto here and I just hook mine back here. Just biases that finger up. So it'll just drop into place. Um, I'll try to get, if that's not clear enough in the video, I'll try to get another angle so you can see how that finger's working. But this stop screw just bears on the back of this, so it either pushes it forward or allows it to go back, positioning this tooth in relationship to the wheel. So, the tooth backs up a little bit, 
get it where we need it. And if you just want to do a real light grind on these things, you don't want to go bananas. Uh, lighter is better. Uh, this unit here, by the way, is something called a Mystic Mist. Um, it's an atomizer. Blows cold air and it draws liquid up out of the tank. Um, and it atomized the liquid right against that, that tooth there. That way it keeps you from burning the tooth if you're taking too heavy a cut. Okay, we'll fire it up. I'll wait till the liquid, uh, the liquid starts coming up. There it is there. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, it's a nice little grind. We're just going to take a little more off. I'll back this nut off. That's a good grind there. Just the index to the next two. You know, like this, just keep going to each two. And that, what I'm doing is I'm only grinding the front. And actually, I could probably drop this thing down lower because it's not grinding the bottom of the two. But normally what I do is I grind the, the, the cutting face and the bottom of the tooth, but I don't grind the back of the other tooth. I'll get that when I go around a second time. It's too hard. Some of you guys might be able to do it better. It's too hard to keep the wheel dressed to fit that perfect profile all the time as it starts to break down. So I find it's better just to grind the front face and the bottom, go around a second time just doing the back of the tooth. And this goes pretty smooth. I mean, you just, you're just going to go through like this. The radio arm guides it beautifully front to back. And sets the angle. Fantastic. And you just simply go through here like this each tooth. And it'll make it as good as new. Let me tell you, you'll get three or four sharpenings, if not more. Uh, certainly three before you got to start really looking for stress cracks. Um, after three, you got to keep a close eye. You don't want to break a band blade if you don't have to on your saw. Um, that's how it's done there. Maybe I'll move the camera and give you a little different angle. All right, let's try this here. I'm, hopefully I'm not blocking the view here. I want to get you a good view of that tooth going through. Hopefully that's good and steady. Pull it back. Nice light grind. And like I say, I'll readjust so I'm grinding the back of the tooth on another go around. And there's no sense demonstrating that. The same procedure, I just change this so I'm grinding the back of this and I go around one more time. This setup works great. Uh, this stock, this is uh, Mystic Mist. You see that? That's the, the fluid you use. Don't atomize oil or something that you're going to be breathing. Uh, use the right stuff and uh, it's going to work good for you. That keeps, the, that keeps the blade nice and cold. And it's simple from there. You just see it and go around. Man, that one's pretty good there. Yeah, you can see there's some broken teeth. That's a broken tooth there. This is a bad blade, so I'm just using it for an example. Nice light grind. You want a little heavier grind to back this off. And you see we start grinding a little heavier real quick. That's how I do it. Um, hopefully you guys can do something similar and refurbish your blades and save yourself $20, $30, $40 a go-around. Alright, hope you enjoy the video.